Shalom. Welcome to the Sedra, where we study the weekly Torah portion. This week's Sedra is, gives us a unique opportunity. Normally, Tazria and Mitzorah are two different Sedra that are read together on the same week. This year, due to the leap year, Tazria is read in one week and Mitzorah on the next, giving us ample time to be able to study both Sedra. It's a rare occurrence, three times every 19 years, and one we should take advantage of, not having to share the learning this week. We have plenty of time to study Tazria on its own, Mitzorah on its own, and I hope you'll take the time this week to open up your Chumash and really study the Sedra as it's supposed to be done. We find, I'm going to go into a very detailed halachic debate among our scholars. And you'll excuse me for dealing so much in the abstract, especially in an idea that doesn't so much apply anymore in our days. We'll hopefully get in the Beit HaMikdash, although it's only as a result of the sin, so we hope that this will never apply again. But it's an interesting debate that can teach us an important lesson. And you'll excuse me for just the minute or two that we're going to spend on, that you're going to have to really pay attention to understand. The Torah tells us that when one would sin in a grievous way, they would develop a skin affliction called tzarat. The one that had it would be called the mitzorah, two terms that we have to understand. The person that had it would then need to check out, next week we're going to discuss the actual words he uses, but would have to dis check out with the Kohen exactly if this w the skin affliction that he had was sarat or was something else, maybe a medical condition. Sarat wasn't medical, it was metaphysical. It was divinely produced. And you'd go to the Kohen and have it checked out. If the Kohen said that was indeed sarat, one would have to do repentance, he'd have to do teshuva to, to correct and then once he did proper teshuva, once he left the camp and did proper teshuva, he would have to live in isolation. He could go back to the Kohen after seven days and have it looked at again. And if the Kohen could look at it and see that it is changed, then the person would be allowed, the Mitzorah would be allowed back into the camp. His repentance had its effect. If it hadn't changed, it means his repentance wasn't good enough and he would have to start all over again. The point of debate that we find in our commentators is at what point did this skin affliction really change? And the Torah lists two things. It says that when it has dimmed, the color, it was a skin affliction that made it turn white. So when the white dimmed and went back to the normal color of the skin, and when it has not spread. If a person had continued to sin, the tzarat, the skin affliction, would begin to spread all over the body. It actually first started in one's house, spread to one's clothes, and then went on one's skin. But if the color would have to have dimmed, and the person would... And, the, and it would have to stop spreading. The debate among our commentators is, does it have, do both features of the Pasuk, both things that the Pasuk talks about, do both of them have to occur? In other words, do both the, skin, the, the affliction, the rash, have to dim in color and stop spreading? Or is the color dimming merely enough? That is the question. And it's an interesting debate, again, very abstract. But the question is, what's the, what's the rationale behind both opinions? And what we're going to answer in a homiletic fashion is what it can teach us. And what I'd like to suggest is as follows. When a person originally got tzarat, when he had this skin affliction, it would show up. If he continued in his sin and refused to repent, it would spread. The opinion that holds that both are necessary, that both the spreading and the dimming are necessary, says as follows, says it's not enough for it to dim, but we have to have evidentiary proof that he is no longer continuing in his sin and that he's corrected it through the process of repentance, through the process of tshuva. How was he able to do that? By seeing that it not only did not spread, but then started to dim. Both factors were necessary in order to properly show that he has gone back. The other opinion that holds all you needed merely was the skin to be, the color of the affliction of the rash of the tzara to dim, says that no, the initial recognition that one had sinned came how? Came from seeing the, the, the affliction change color. Came from seeing the tzarat on the skin, which was the changing of the color. As soon as you see that initial sign dissipate, then one knows that they have done repentance and then the person can come back to the camp. Two different approaches. What can we learn from it? It's an interesting idea. We too, we don't have tzarat, but we have signs about when we're sitting. If it's a Bein Adam HaChavero idea, we see that our friends are treating us a little differently because we've insulted them. Those are initial signs. Secondary signs are we see that word is spreading, that I'm one not to do business with, or I'm one not to socialize with because of my aggressive or my abrasive behavior. The same thing is true when it's Bein Adam I find myself in a, in a desirous, in a, in a 
an instinctual type of lifestyle where I can't control my desires anymore. Although we don't have sarat, those are our initial signs. That lack of control, that lack of getting along with my friends, of my sin. We shouldn't need an initial and a secondary sign of sin in order to correct ourselves. We should follow this first approach that all we need to see is the dimming of the color, that initial sign. The lesson that we learn are that there are always initial signs of sin and secondary signs of sin. It gets worse. Our lives take a downfall as we continue in the role of sinning. It all might seem fine and dandy. One didn't feel weakened by Tzarat. It wasn't an illness. But by looking at the skin, one would know whether or not he had it. We have to quote unquote check out our inner skins, check out our lifestyles to see if those initial and secondary signs of sinning are showing up in our lives. That's the lesson of this week's Sedra. That's the lesson we have to take home with us. And the idea that the ultimate correction of our sins, of recognizing the signs and repenting from them, is one that we have to take to heart. Shabbat Shalom. Check out the other features we have at BetJacob.org. Especially, especially the Take 10 for Torah. If you can sit for five minutes, you can sit for another ten minutes at some point in this week. If not right now, and listen and watch a good shear. Shabbat Shalom.